I just want to talk about Obama. A few people have been hammering him, and I'll be honest with you, when people ask me about the original flight ticket thing, I did say people, mm, when he didn't go back, I was like, you've wasted other people's money. That wasn't what they gave me the money for, but I lived alone. You know, I don't give him any money. He, you know, he can't even get credit from my store. Um, the point being is, Obama's well aware I don't give him credit. Obama's well aware that if he doesn't pay his rent, he'll be out in his ear. Now, Obama is also aware, as he said himself, it's the best apartment he's had in the Philippines because he's now renting the, the unit next to Jay. He's also got aircon in there. The, the units are 6K. Um, I'm gonna be up in those when, when I finish the, the new ones, they'll be 10K because um, quite simply, they're, they're nice apartments for the money. Um, but what you've got is, He's put in the aircon himself. Because I said, look, you want the want the aircon, you fit it yourself. This is part of a 6K rent. You know, I'm not doing stuff for you. You look after the apartment. So he's installed my aircon. Fine. He's installed a water heater system. Same as Jay. They've got their own hot water systems. Why don't I put it in? The same reason the rent 6K. As I've said before, my units are designed for either people that want to stay there long term or people that want to get their stuff together and move to somewhere bigger later because this allows you to accumulate your stuff in a safe environment. Um, so, for example, if you buy yourself an, a nice bed, a nice sofa, all this sort of stuff, it's fine because I can move all the stuff that's in the unit up into one of our spare units. So I have no problem with moving furniture out, etc. So the point being is Barmer's setting himself up for a long term thing in here. He's also aware that he can't get any credit with me. He's also aware that he does not want to owe me any money and he's got no ability to get any money from me. Um, so there is no risk to me. At the end of the day, he knows the boundaries because I set them. A lot of people don't set boundaries. And as I've told you before, everything's about communication, everything. So it doesn't matter if it's a relationship or a new tenant. The new tenant is well aware of the situation. You don't pay your rent, you, you, you have to leave or will be removed, one of the two. Um, but the, the point being is you're in the realms of business now. Um, and that's one of the things that I do stress is when somebody says, oh, I'm your friend. It's like, this is not friendship. This is business. Business is a very, very different game. But anyway, so a few people have mentioned a few things about Obama. The first thing I want to say on this is I understand where some of you guys are getting it from. Because, like I said, the plane ticket, the reason that was the original thing for me, that was a red flag when he didn't actually fly back to the US. Um, so that was, I'm well aware of that. Um, there's accusations of him assaulting his girlfriend. His girlfriend is actually moving to Cebu. This, this is actually what Obama told me um, about a week ago. So the fact is she's already on her way to Cebu. And as I've said before, when you do stuff online, be aware the Philippines genre has the worst gossipers on the planet. There's a lot of messed up people out there. Um, now the funny thing is the ones that will be most offended about this will be the ones that recognize that they're messed up. Because uh, the point I'm saying is there's a lot of people out in the Philippines that are bipolar. There's a lot of people with other mental conditions. There's other people that have simply just got nothing better to do. I mean, I remember probably about 2008, 2009, when I used to go on to living in Cebu for him. A lot of the guys on there, you would know when they were drinking because they'd have a few beers and that's when they would go on the... Uh, for him after they got home or just sat there drinking away. Um, so stirring the pot is part and parcel of the Philippines community. It's a sad thing because it makes it very destructive. Um, because there is a lot more people interested in destroying things than actually helping develop things. Um, and all I'm saying to anybody out there is they don't get drawn into it. You know, if you, if you think Obama did this or that, that's fine. But when you state it as a fact, at least be sure 100% is true. Because it wasn't long ago, some of these trolls were spreading rumors about myself. And where are they now? Because 
everything's been proven as a lie. And that's my point. Now, I give people the benefit of the doubt because I've been around the block more than once. I've been a Philippines genre for a decade. And although some people may assume they've got something new, I've seen these trolling things going back as far as 2005. Um, and it's often by people not in the Philippines, have failed in the Philippines, or have some weird connection with the Philippines that didn't bear fruit, e.g. could never afford to go there. But it's, it's all the same type of stereotypes, it's very weird. And that's why when somebody who's on about myself and they're going, oh, well, you should defend yourself, why don't you defend? Because the answer to that was very simple. Would you apologize when I prove that you lie? The answer to that is no. Um, that's the trolling thing. Bama, I'll give the benefit of the doubt. He has got his um, monthly check coming in. Now, if people give him money online for doing a live chat, that's up to him. That's what he's doing. I know some people have said, oh, it's scamming or whatever. It's like, I haven't watched his channel, so I wouldn't have to, I couldn't comment it unless it's actually not been, if he's requesting money for specific things and he's not spending it on it, then I agree with him. But I know he was doing a fundraiser for his teeth and I know he's getting his teeth fixed because it was me that took him to the dentist's. So, from that point of view, unless it's actually something that's true, it's, it's a very difficult one to call somebody a scammer for it, um, in the sense that if he's getting the dental work done and he's used the money for the dental work and shows you he's done it, how can that be a scam? Now, if you dislike the fact that he's doing a fundraiser and raising money to have his te teeth fixed, that's something different. That's not a scam. It's just you don't like him. And you don't like the way he does stuff. That's fine. There's certainly some people out there in the expat community, I would agree with you on that. There's other people I would say are scamming out there. Um, and it's the way that they're doing it. You know, for example, raising, I don't know, Groceries for 5,000 pesos, then giving somebody 500 and pocketing 4,500. That is a definite scam. But I would also say it's very difficult to deal with this sort of stuff in the sense that if people want to donate that money to them, there's very little you can do about it. And I always see there's bigger problems out there. I see things like UNICEF is a very crooked enterprise. I see Oxfam is a crooked enterprise. I see in the Typhoon Haiyan these charity scummy organizations turning up with their camera crews to film the, the deprivation and destruction to hop on a flight and start a telephone and not actually put any of the money back into the country for the disaster relief. Now that I have a problem with. So when I see somebody may have earned an extra $50 on something. I think, so what? I'm more concerned with the millions that get siphoned off um, through government organizations as well as taxpayers that are donating funds. Um, that's, that's what I look at. You know, at the end of the day, there's, there's bigger stuff out there. And one of the things I do find with the Philippines genre is a lot of it is in the fish tank. A lot of people tack this guy here that's made an extra hundred dollars or something, yet at the same time will ignore like the big charities that are really do abusing stuff. Um, yeah, I remember, I don't know if you guys know the Viz comic. There's a Viz comic where they had a cartoon of UNICEF and they got all the four befores parked outside and they're starving people outside in a big compound. And in the middle of the compound, they're having a barbecue. For me, that sums up a lot of these organizations. And that's, that's why I say, you know, with Obama stuff, <laughs> people don't have to donate. And the thing with him, you can actually physically see where he spent the money anyway. With these other ones, like with Typhoon Haiyan, they're turning up, doing the video footage, doing all this, and disappearing. They're not coming back. They just wanted to see the bad stuff. 
They ain't gonna send nothing. That's the bizarre thing. A lot of stuff never even reached the people. A lot of stuff when it was never even sent. It was just for fundraising. Now that stuff bothers me. Yet people are dismissive on that stuff. I've covered it before and people said, well, I phone and give some money on the phone. Um, I feel happy I've done my bit because it allows to dismiss from that. My point being is it goes on executive expenses, it goes on office space, cars, whatever. And then you find out if you're lucky, 10% actually reach the people. Um, I don't call that helping. I call that actually hindering because they've removed the ability to get funds to those people in other avenues because what they've introduced is things like corporate policies and stuff that legalize everything. Everything becomes 100% legal, which means direct intervention becomes more difficult in the sense that you need an accountant um, and transparent paperwork. You've got to have five board members. You've got to have so many Filipinos on those boards as well, which include the treasurer, etc. And then all you wanted to do, for example, was load a truck full of water, biscuits and whatever, and just drive them somewhere and drop them off. You know, at the end of the day, they've now created a business. They've created an industry out of this. That's where I have an issue. But I'm not asking to get his teeth fixed. I couldn't care less on. There's far bigger problems out there. Thanks for watching.